Right, I'm Natasha Javaskar. It'll be a tightrope walk for Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he visits Sri Lanka, with both sides admitting that the fisherman issue is both difficult and sensitive. Both governments are harping on an interim solution to resolve deadlock between the fishermen of Tamil Nadu and northern Sri Lanka. Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj and Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh following his harsh remarks on shooting India fishermen if they enter his country's waters, held extensive talks in Colombo on Saturday on the issue to find an interim solution. The frequent arrest of Indian fishermen by Sri Lankan authorities is a highly emotive issue in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu and no Indian Prime Minister can ever ignore this issue. Prime Minister Modi will be the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Sri Lanka since 1987. India has been hoping that the new Lankan government will develop ties on the foundation of genuine and effective reconciliation, creating harmony among all sections there. Today on Insight, we are asking our panelists how important this visit is and what it means for India-Sri Lanka ties. <laughs> And joining me for more on this, very esteemed guest with me, former Ambassador K.P. Fabian. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us in this program. Also with me, Thank Professor you. Sriram Cholia, foreign affairs expert and also dean at Jindal School of International Affairs. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us here. Also with me, Padma Rao Sundarji, foreign affairs editor at Swaraj. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us here. And with me is P. Sahadevan, Professor at South Asian Studies, JNU. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us in this program. So in the first segment, let's try and understand how important this visit is, Professor Cholia, and fishermen dispute. Uh, highly an emotive issue. Do you think that uh, the governments uh, can actually solve it or, uh, you know, if they want? Absolutely. I think um, this is the kind of, the, there's a new bilateral spirit here, mm -hmm. you know, which is different from the time of the Rajapakshas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think India is increasingly going to trust this government mm -hmm. and will want to support it and will ensure that it completes its full term mm -hmm. because it's a patchy coalition after mm -hmm. all with lots of disparate elements mm -hmm. pulling it in different directions. Mm -hmm. So I think India will be doing a great service um, to uh, Sri Lanka right. by showing magnanimity on these issues mm -hmm. like fishermen uh, and also on economic cooperation mm -hmm. so because this comprehensive economic partnership agreement has not yet been signed right. and has been stalled in many ways due to the negative attitude of the Rajapakshas mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So all these got to go move forward mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> Modi is the one to deliver it mm -hmm. because um, in, interestingly, Sri Lanka and India have had, you know, the strongest bilateral trade in a long time mm -hmm. uh, uh, within the SARC region. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, there, the potential is for much higher mm -hmm. economic cooperation mm -hmm. for us to help with their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the process, solve this fisher folk, uh, you know, uh, problem. Because at the end of the day, it's, we are not talking of large numbers. Right. right. The last count I had was like less than 100 Indian fishermen. So we are not. It's, a, it's not a massive humanitarian crisis mm -hmm. as it's being portrayed by some people. Mm -hmm. So it is not. It's it's a, it, it's an issue, but not a central issue in the bilateral relationship. Mm -hmm. So even when Prime Minister Vikram Singh says these comments, mm -hmm. it's directed towards his domestic audience. They're facing a parliamentary election right. coming up. The UNP, which he represents, has got a water base in the north and mm -hmm. east. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the rights of the Jaffna fisher folk mm -hmm. who have been deprived these uh, prime fishing grounds because they don't have the same kind of technology that some of our trawlers right. and big mechanized vehicles have. Right. And uh, frankly, the bulk of the catch is on the Sri Lankan side of the lines mm -hmm. rather than the Indian side. Mm -hmm. So the idea of opening up to both sides means that we are in a way encroaching upon them. Right, so what you are saying is that these sort of critical comments coming in from a Prime Minister was in fact uncalled for but also the fact that he but is he looking say for... That we are looking for a reasonable deal right, and he wants solution. it to be sorted out at the local level between the Fisher Folk Associations. Okay, but, but the, you know, because we also call, call ourselves highly mechanized, so in terms of you know the GPRS facilities and everything, is it is it like really a big challenge to know where, where to cross and uh, you know where, where not, not to go actually it's go beyond so that uh, yeah, international yeah. maritime boundary line, but also... Uh, uh, do you think, uh, Professor Cholia, that you know, in Sri Lanka, with a new national government in place, and these are all opposition parties, uh, they are looking for a way to actually get, get in as maximum support as they can, because you know the, the parliamentary elections just, uh, as you rightly pointed out, just weeks away. So uh, there is tremendous pressure internally also, and it asks for a strong reaction on issues that actually bother them. Yeah, I mean, see the um, both the Sinhalese and the uh, Tamil uh, mm -hmm. speaking areas. Mm -hmm. um, I think Sri Lanka wants to assert itself as an autonomous and independent country, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is where these things come in. Mm -hmm. So while you have right wingers 
even centrists and mainstream um, Sri Lankans mm -hmm. would want to say that you know right now they are saying that there is no tilt in fact Ranil was clear we are neither tilted towards China nor right. towards India right so when you say that they're playing in many ways what we used to say in the Cold War is kind of like non-alignment right mm -hmm. between two major power centers mm -hmm. so when you're non-aligned it's important that you draw your lead, lead lines mm -hmm. and you say that you know we want to cooperate with India mm -hmm. we want to <coughs> move away from the um, excessive dependence on mm -hmm. China but at the same time on you know prickly issues like these we don't want to be railroaded mm -hmm. by a powerful neighbor mm -hmm. so I think that's how they are able to assert it mm -hmm. but uh, if you see uh, Sirisen and uh, Ranil mm -hmm. this combination uh, what they've been you know constantly saying is that um, in a way when they say balance, right, right now, uh, until the last seven or eight years, there was an imbalance. Mm -hmm. So when they say balance, it means inevitably moving closer towards India mm -hmm. to come to the center, mm -hmm. to be non-aligned mm -hmm. or to be neutral, right? And that also and that is the for, opportunity space for us, right? But that also asks for stable government in Sri Lanka and how far all these parties can actually stay. At least for together. two years, you know, Ranil has been saying we right. will at least work for at two least years. for uh, two years. And in the past, there said. have been very, very unseemly coalitions that have, you mm -hmm. know, worked mm -hmm. and also have broken down. Mm -hmm. So Sri Lankan politics is like cloak and dagger you know it's always been that way okay so, but our goal i think mm -hmm. should be to strengthen this regime mm -hmm. because th beyond this mm -hmm. You are talking about a return of uh, Rajapaksha in some form or the other if it is made okay. to fail or made okay. to misgovern. But I, I don't really think if India can actually play a role. We can by being can. generous, okay. by creating economic growth there, mm -hmm. by giving Sirisena talking points with his public that our relationship with India brings concrete economic but, but do you to think that, but Are we also focusing on greater Indian Ocean diplomacy? Let's not forget because uh, Prime Minister Modi will first be going uh, to uh, Seychelles and then uh, to Mauritius and then to Sri Lanka. So are we looking at a greater, you know, a bigger security uh, doctrine? and focusing more on maritime security issues. I think Prime Minister's visit to the region, including Sri Lanka, is actually going to be very substantive. Mm -hmm. He's going to address the parliament of Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. He's going to address the young people of that country. Mm -hmm. He's going to talk about a different vision for regional integration. Mm -hmm. So I think it's massive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to you know, downplay its significance mm -hmm. just because it's hurried or it's rushed or it's a few, three or four days. Mm -hmm. Rather, what we're going to see is increasing Indian military and security cooperation. Mm -hmm. And we need to be what we call a net security provider in the Indian Ocean region. Mm -hmm. So Mauritius, we're giving virtually a coast guard to them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, with Seychelles, we are also talking about how not only piracy mm -hmm. but the spread of the Islamic State through the uh, Arabian Sea mm -hmm. can be contained. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, 80% of China's oil mm -hmm. passes through the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. and therefore it is a lever mm -hmm. in great power politics mm -hmm. that we will need to play. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what the sensitivities so is this, are. Is this India's response to uh, the China China's uh, growth interest in uh, the fact that maritime silk route strategy is it India's response uh, through its Indian Ocean? It's response? unfortunate Maldives has dropped off because of a domestic mm -hmm. political fracas there. Mm -hmm. We should have been there as well mm -hmm. because these are the signposts right. of the Indian Ocean Rim region. Mm -hmm. We used to have something called an IOR ARC, yeah, which, which, which has, which has be, mm -hmm. become moribund. We need to mm -hmm. revive these things because at the end of the day, if we want a hub and spokes kind of model for the mm -hmm. region mm -hmm. where India remains the growth uh, generator and the fountainhead from which all the prosperity will flow in both directions, mm -hmm. we've got to take proactive stance. Mm -hmm. Final comments from you, Professor Cholia. No prevarication, mm -hmm. no vacillation. Mm -hmm. Narendra Modi is a man mm -hmm. who stands for action mm -hmm. and for the entire Indian Ocean region, including in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. We are not going to sit back and watch. We did not sit back and watch mm -hmm. and allow Rajapaksha to have one more term. Right. And I don't think we should uh, let this drift. Mm -hmm. This is the time actually for India to show greater regional leadership mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that these visits will achieve those. Thank you very much uh, Ambassador Fabian, Professor Cholia, ma'am mm -hmm. and uh, also Professor Sahadevan for joining us in this yep. program. And that's all we have for you in another edition of Insight. Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar.